how did I miss this place the last 20 years? We are way out west in this one in a brick storefront full of antiques and vintage in Montana. Will there be wild finds in the wild, wild west? Let's go see. This is the biggest mall in central Montana. Billings is the biggest city now in Montana. And I've heard it's a pretty good place. It's the first time I've gotten to come here. It's the only thing open on Sunday. So we drove five hours to get in about an hour and a half worth of shopping. So let's go. If you need a little pick me up, they have pumpkin spice latte. Okay, this place consists of a main room, a big upstairs, and then this side room here. So I'm gonna start in the side room. Genesee beer mirror with the bottle is $65. We have a single horn Fenton a pairn in the silver crest for $85. Leesite lighter with a little telephone and it's $16.95. So our space seems reasonably priced. The Fenton Atterbury style deck is 75. So we may not find bargains in this particular space, but it looks like the store is reasonable and that's a good sign coming in. It means we'll find bargains somewhere. This is a really cool thing, a Rotolette. You could get a hundred dollar jackpot. This was distributed out of Las Vegas. It's going to date to the 1930s when gambling was made legal there. So it's by Bally and it is a quarter machine, which was actually a lot of money. Here's a bunch of these old post office mail doors. Lots of people are repurposing these into little boxes and things now. Or banks. A little bit of this yellow floss. Let's see what we have around the corner. Looks like 40% off all items in booth 100. Well, this is a place that we could spend a little bit of time. We are not far from the Crow Reservation. This is an interesting red wing piece here. You can tell by this brown before you even pick it up that it's going to be red wing. It's not marked very clearly, but it does have the name on the bottom and this little ewer. I already have the console set with the deer, but this ewer with the dolphin handle or dragon handle, depending on how you look at it, is going to be just around $50. Let's see what we have down here. A nice egg scale, but we are in farm country, so egg scales and a lot of tins may be on the high side. There's a schoolboy peanut butter for $175 and a Peter Pan peanut butter, a really old Peter Pan. in the 50s era Peter Pan behind it. Peanut butter tins are very collectible. Now this is fun. They took an old Ford Model A wooden spoke wheel, turned it into a table, and then lit it remotely from underneath. They're asking $4.75. I'm seeing a lot of people repurposing tires and industrial foundry discs and things like that in that manner. This is really cool. I always like these scenic shades from about 1960. You see a lot of them in this part of the country. It was very popular out west because they often were done on wood bases and they generally are natural scenes. The only problem is if you crack them, you can't do anything about it. The TV lamp with the discount is going to be $39, which is a pretty good deal for that. And I like these little Miller Studio 1951 dated. They were around for a while. Chalk horse heads. How much for the pair of these? Oh, they have a big price on them. See, I'm in horse country. One thing about getting back west is certain things I've been buying a lot in the east to bring here. Well, I've got to shift my buying now. I like these vintage die cut Halloween decorations. $12 for that one. They're saying Fiesta because the colors are the same, but this is Riviera it's by Homer Lachlan. I love the different colors. They mix and match really well. And the square dishes always have appealed to me. These came out in the late 30s. They have the 11 piece set at 65. The orange or red as they call it is gonna be more because that was very limited in production. Now this is cool because it looks like a regular phone, but it's an RV signal core telephone. And what's great is that if you read here, it's very faint, but it basically says, do not discuss classified information over this telephone. It was very important to keep classified information classified during the Second World War. 
Well, I hope you're enjoying this video, and if you are, please thumbs up to like it and click that button to be notified of future videos. Wait, you mean you're not subscribed? Then you can't click the button to be notified for future videos, so subscribe! Then you will be able to be alerted of all our future content. Subscription costs nothing. Some fun 50s modern. This Aladdin lamp with the yellow base has a nice look and a great period shade. Priced at $195. I like the clock here too, but I have to say the prices on the mid-century here are pretty high. I think there's so many people moving into this area from California and the coast that there's more interest in it here than there has been in the past. A bunch of the old beer bottle salt and pepper shakers from right after Prohibition. Wire cars. Wire trains. Wire art, definitely a 70s thing. These are priced up there, though, about $195 each. Well, in the middle of a million amber and milk glass Fenton shoes, we do have this Viking red-tailed bird. Let's see if they've caught up on prices with this. It's got the label, and it's $50. The red is the harder color to get, so that's not a terrible price these days, but it's not a, gee, we don't know that they're valuable price. I like this guy up here. He is Howard Pierce from Claremont, California, and he's an early piece. The later pieces are ink stamped, but this has the window with the giraffe. Unfortunately, you can see the palm tree has been broken. It's very sad. Even at $65, that's a hard one to find, but in that condition, it's not going to sell for that price, in my opinion. Astoria Heirloom, $60 on this. You know, again, the prices are all fair, but I'm not finding any real deals yet. Oh, what a pretty piece of furniture, though. This looks like 1910s. The loop handles, the leaded glass center. It's quarter sawn oak. And it's got a nice mirror in the back. It's priced at $11.95. Again, Billings is an area that's really growing. So, you know, there may not be as many deals here as there used to be because we're looking at a market that is booming rather than in the old days when you came to Montana to buy stuff because everyone was moving out. This opalescent bowl is pretty and it's Murano and it is $95. And these bottles are all lighters, believe it or not. In fact, there's a whole case of old vintage lighters and there's a lot of variety and this is why I enjoy buying and selling them. Plus they're small. Peace Cigarettes is going to be from about 1970. This one's supposed to be Napoleonic Revival, like a coin. You've got advertising, you have fraternal organizations like the Eagles. So cigarette lighters cross into a lot of different collectibles areas because at one time it was just assumed everyone was going to have one. Now if I can find the rotator on this, I'll turn it around for you. Otherwise we'll have to look at it this way. There were streamlined Art Deco varieties that are collectible for their style, like these down here. There were ones that were meta because they're advertising cigarettes. There you go. The Helene Curtis Empress is a big old dryer for your big old Dufont. From some point in the 19, late 50s, I would say, priced at 165 This is great for Halloween. It looks like it's had acid in it. Very spooky. I haven't been running into as many old trophies lately. Cute little badminton shuttlecock holder there. But trophies do well, especially if they have a little bit more of a deco look. They want the topper to be metal. These kind of bases are good. This one's priced at 45 That's pretty much full retail. So far, I'm mainly finding full retail on things here. Now, this is unusual because it's brass. You don't see a lot of brass candlestick phones. You primarily see Bakelite, the black plastic. This one is written in Spanish, it appears, unless that's Italian. Larga Distancia, 92. Oh no, that's Spanish. Very, very pretty piece. It's priced at 350 but they're that scarce. I mean, brass, all brass anything is a lot harder to find. And this one was made in Coventry, England for the European market. However, it looks like it's been rewired to go on an American circuit. And here's Mr. Rogers. And a signed letter from him from 2001, shortly before he passed on. My mother swears that was my favorite show when I was really little. I do not remember it. 
We're getting close enough to Washington State that we're starting to see Olympia Brewery signs. These are priced about 75. That's about what they go for now. I have to say this RC, which is just a rack piece, is massively overpriced at 200 though. I hate to say it, but it's true. The Ortlieb's thermometer is a better value for money at 120. We see a lot of these from the late 60s and early 70s, especially the Northern Pacific and Great Northern and the early Burlington Northern Railway. They would make these calendars for the people in the stations to use and to give out as advertising every year. This one's priced at $16. They're usually written on or taped, but if you can find one in good condition, they'll sell sometimes for $25. If you get older ones, they can sell for hundreds, but the 60s are pretty common. The Viking Glass Bird in the orange, the large one, is priced at $55, and that's right on retail for that piece, but it's a great piece to see. We are not seeing them as much as we used to. Now, the painted letters could be a buy. They are wood. They're laminated, but they look like they have some age as well. It's all been a question of what can you spell with them. I've met a few collectors for the old Campfire Girls outfits over the years because they're lots of fun and they're so big and they're showy and they display well. This is 19 early 60s and it is canvas fabric with all sorts of beads and patches. So this one's really fun. It is priced at $36. That seems to be about what I get for them when I find them. I have a feeling that's a misspelling. I bet that was supposed to say desert hotels. Dessert hotels sound like fun. It's $1.95 and it's from Spokane and it's a bottle opener, so I guess I'm going to get that. The RCMP Mountie knife from the 50s at $35 is probably priced about right. Mountie stuff is very collectible in the United States as well as Canada, thanks in large part to Sergeant Preston of the Mounties. A lot of older people remember that. Here's a very handsome little cylinder desk. A cylinder desk is like a roll top, but instead of a timbre, those little slats, it's just one piece that slides up, and then you have your desk in there. This one is priced at $7.35. It dates to about $18.90. The classic 1950s canister set that we see in red also came in yellow. These were by the Columbus Plastics Company in Ohio. $50 for the set is actually pretty fair. This is something I haven't seen in a long time. It's a Chinese oil lamp can canteen. They would actually have to go places and drag oil home, so they'd have special canteens that were leather clad and wouldn't leak to do it, and this is one of them. I drove very close to here today. I wanted to see Devil's Tower, but it'll have to be another time because I wanted to get here too. And here's a novelty we don't see very often. Look at this little picture. This is Pilgrim Glass. They're the only ones I know of that made a left-handed pitcher. Yes, that's right. If you are a left-hander, the handle is here, and you pour it like this, and it's much more stable for you. It's nice that somebody thought about the other 10%, don't you think? It's priced at $15. They sell for a little bit more than that just because of the novelty of it. The Catherine Holm are in great condition. Catherine Holm is a town in Norway. It is not a person named Catherine Holm. Took me a long time to figure that out. These Dutch ovens are priced at two and two fifty. Hard to find that size, and especially with the handle. I'm going to head upstairs next and see what's there. I understand there's vendors in the basement as well, so this place is pretty packed. And they definitely have some neat old furniture. I really like the oak hall tree on the right here in this hall, in this nice fall display. It's from about 1900. It's American. It's got the nice big beveled mirror and a very solid seat and arms and a bench underneath. So a practical piece for a lot of people. Well, this place definitely has a lot of things that are what people are looking for now. It's got a lot of Pyrex, a lot of Corel. It's got this great blow mold plastic Looney Tunes wall light. They have it priced at 500, but it is a pretty scarce one. They have a ton of cast iron, nicely seasoned. It's a very orderly, well composed place with a lot of cool stuff and they know what they've got, and it is priced that way. However, this is a great Flamingo Compact. Unfortunately for me, it's over $60. Butte Special Beer has a cone top, and so does General Pulaski. Beer cans were cone tops in the 1950s. The flat came later, and so cone tops are what you really want to look for if you are looking for old beer cans. They are much less plentiful than the later ones. 
This little metal stamped clock that looks like faux tile was very popular when doing little mosaic tiles on things. It was popular in the early 60s, and it has remained a very saleable clock. This one's only priced at 19. It's not quite cheap enough for me to buy for resale, but it's definitely a good price. And there's a Great Northern calendar. I was mentioning Great Northern with the goat. And this one is 1968, and they are asking $40 for it, but it's in perfect condition. Well, Montana's mining country, and so we will see interest in metal here. And this copper bird cage is a really neat thing I haven't seen before, priced at $145. All right, here we go into a whole bunch more stuff. We've got a lot of more modern toys and that sort of thing, and a bunch of old golden books. This has a lot of this platinite, which is the fired on color over the modern tone shape. So very Art Deco, happy colors, but you do have to be careful or you will wear that off. And I have to admit that's kind of a clever way to get your booth noticed. And it definitely sets a period in time back when we used to have static on television. Now we only wish we had static on television. They definitely are trying to get people in who are connected to more recent collectibles because hats are definitely a thing now. These older baseball caps, they've got a bunch of vintage ones here. They've got mugs. They have a lot of things that I see some of the newer dealers on YouTube finding good value in, like plush. Or Tupperware. Here's an entire booth full of it. This particular sign has always disturbed me somehow. I'm not sure what they're all in together, but they're definitely all up in that Falstaff beer. Right out of the 70s, 125 on that. Here's a whole bunch on sale of this Anarcho Blue Majolica. At least they were trying to make it look like Majolica. It's 1960s earthenware. It was actually called Mood Indigo. There's one with the original label, and that actually intrigues me because it has the original label. However, even at half off, it's $27.50, and I don't know enough people who are collecting this yet to pay those kind of prices. Very distinctive picture was made by Camark in Arkansas, and even if you can't find a label, you will definitely recognize this shape. It almost looks like a curling rock in a way. Oftentimes they'll say hand-painted 22 karat gold, and under that label I'll show you. It says Norso, and Norso was a decorating company down the street in Camden, Arkansas, who took certain pieces of Camark pottery and decorated them and sold them with the gold. So when you see Norso, it is a Camark piece. It's just that it was decorated by a different company, similar to the way Shawnee sent their seconds off to be decorated in gold by another company. This just says pair of cream candlesticks. They don't recognize them as Franciscan Coronado because they only have the Made in USA mark. They're $22, which is about the right price. There's just more and more levels up in this place. This is almost like a stage. I'm not exactly sure how this place was used before it was an antique mall. It does seem like it would have been a department store, but they had a lot of levels and risers. There's a bunch of jadeite glass, of mostly the Fire King. Again, mostly at the right prices, but definitely desirable everywhere. These are fun. These are highway patrol cars and cop cars and other friction toy cars and battery operated cars, mostly made in Japan in the 1950s and 60s. You've got a 62, well, it says 62 Oldsmobile, but that Oldsmobile is actually a 58 with a 62 plate on it. Japan was a little behind at that point. You see prices in the $85 to $125 range, and for played with examples, that's pretty fair. Boy, do they have the milk glass, especially Fenton. A lot of Fenton here. I'm actually surprised to see so much in Billings. These are Acro Agate. They look like Jadeite, but they're a little deeper and a little more mossled. This is the company that made marbles, or one of the companies that made marbles. And they made children's dishes as well in the 1930s and 40s. Howard Johnson was one of the first roadside fronting hotel restaurant chains in the United States. And this is an early cafe platter from them, priced at $28. You can see the old school logo up there. Besides their size, I think it's the glazes that are getting people interested in Royal Hager. They did so many textures, so many swirls. This swirled glaze from the 1960 era. 
at $40 is a pretty nice looking piece and it's got great height. Being closer to Canada, we're starting to see these up here. This is Royal Albert's Our Emblems Deer Cake Plate and this showed all of the different floral displays that related to the different provinces of Canada. This would have been done sometime around 1970 and there it is. $18. In the late 60s, with the interest in the Panhellenic here in the United States in terms of design, the Greek companies started making more for tourists and for export. And this is an example here. This is Dallas Keramik from Greece. They're neat looking pieces. They just don't seem to sell for a lot of money. I don't know why these motifs haven't really come back, but I think maybe it's because it's a very informal society right now. And this is more of a classical look at design. But everything changes. Right now that's $24. Someday it will be appreciated differently. This is Gladding McBean's El Patio, and the red is a really hard color to find. In the old days at $50, I would have bought this immediately. It doesn't have a Franciscan label. It has a G McB for Gladding McBean, the parent company. I'm going to look this up because even in this day and age, that color is so hard to find. I wonder if it might not be valuable. Ooh, an Autodex with the original box. Now, if this hasn't been used, that might be fun. This was the old thing before you had a phone to keep all your information. You would just do that and press a button and up would come everybody with the letter I and J and a pen. It's amazing that phones do this and a million things more and are a third of the size. Well, they're having a sale, but it's firm, and that's okay because these are selling for about $40 to $50 if the paper hasn't been used, and it looked like this one, the little use it got was in pencil, so I'm going to get it. Elvis looks like he saw a mouse. We are out west in old magazines about the west, Frontier Times, True West. All of these have been collectible for years. Some of the people who did the cover art lived in the areas of eastern Washington and Idaho and Montana, so there's a lot of collectors around here for these things. This cute Japanese porcelain tea set has the lithophane of the geisha in the bottom. You can see her face when you finish your tea. Japan's Kelvin Company made these silly ceramic monkeys about at the end of their run in the late 70s or early 80s. $16 for the set. I'm surprised I haven't seen these all over the place. Sturdy action toys for an exciting Christmas. Oh, I would love to find a bunch of sturdy action toys for an exciting Christmas, but I haven't had a lot of luck finding toys I could afford in a long time. Nor beer trays. This Lucky Lager is priced at $55, but that's because that's a Northwest brand. And we have every kind of sifter known to man. That's not true. I don't see a nutmeg grinder in there. That would be small and more valuable. Okay, this definitely was a retail establishment because there's another entire room here. They've got these old wagon lanterns in here. This is what they looked like before they would have been made into car lanterns where they were rounded off. Look at this very pretty gray scale. This portrait vase. She's quite lovely and the way she's dressed actually seems like something that you might think it would be more contemporary, but this was made by Warwick, China in Ohio. This is part of the Ioga line. They did a lot of portraits at that time, but they're usually monks. They're very seldomly pretty women. That's a very nice piece. I wonder what the price is. $150. And they have these interesting handles on it. They're saying Victorian. I think it's more like 1910. This is an interesting teapot. This is Victorian. It's got the pewter top. This is also metal with enameling, so the whole thing is actually metal. It's a nice look. They did these in the 1870s and 80s, and it's priced at 65 Now, because it's dry here, we do sometimes find these fringed original shade lamps, and it's really great to see them with the original shades because so few of these have survived. They're mostly reproductions now. A lot of them were made with weighted silk that had the chemical in it that made it dissolve in order to make it heavier so that because they were selling by the pound, it would weigh more. So a lot of these are just falling apart. So these being in such great shape are wonderful. 285 for this one, 250 for this lamp, but the shade alone is just about worth the entire price. Just hard to find nowadays in that condition. And here's one of these patriotic mirrors, stamped metal, chipped glass, 1890s. This one appears to have George Washington 
there's that John Paul, jo no, it's George Washington. I thought maybe John Paul Jones because I saw the sailboat, but that's just to show the modern conveniences of the Victorian era, like railroads. And this one is priced at 225 This was someone's little pet carrier that they made. They poked little holes in the side so Yoakum could breathe and be carried around. Isn't that cute? Little latches, and Yoakum must have been something pretty small because it could fit in there. We're out west, so we're going to see these brands. You see the glasses, you see the beer glasses clad in leather. It's definitely collectible when you find this stuff. They were made by Libby, and they were done with the brands in the late 60s. They are priced at 75 for the set of four. Well, fortunately, it's not just me keeping them late. All of these cases are 50% off. And this whole space actually seems to be 50% off. And there is some cool stuff in here. Now, some of it's priced a little bit higher than I can pay. But at half price, some of these things are pretty interesting. Yeah. I particularly like this Canadian enameled buckle from when there were seven Canadian provinces. This is quite old. It would be $22 with the discount. I have a hunch that might be worth buying. We're going to see really quickly if anything jumps out at us, because we're running low on time, but there's an old railroad key at $7. I would take that. Studebaker advertising. Oh, that's cute. A little scraper brush for your Studebaker car. I'll take that as well. The Coca-Cola bottle opener, if it's old, which it may well be, and not a reproduction, would be worth the $9 price. These are all fake. Every last one of them. Cute little compass. That's six dollars. That's a maybe. They have some sparklies in here. It all looks like decent quality. A few cute pieces. I like the black and clear there. This enameling is fun in the fall colors there too. Defunct airline collectibles. We've got. Well, Delta's not defunct, but they're not flying Airbus A310s anymore. These are old baggage stickers. They're not giving those out anymore. There's the old Delta logo. This is really fun to show. This is Russell Wright, but this is by Ideal Toy Company in plastic. Yes, your dolls can have Russell Wright dishes that are just exactly like the cool stuff the modernists collect. And these were made in the 50s. It's only $22 for the whole set. A lot of interest in Native American here. This is a sort of amateurly done but cute totem pole that would be $13 now. W. Clay sign. I actually think that's a lot of fun for that price. I might just have to have that just because it's got to look. Oh, but it's broken at the top. Darn. However, this one by the Seminole Tribe is larger than you usually see. It's only going to be $17 and it's got the tag on it. So I'll take that. She belongs here, and yet she's far from home. This kendo clock with the different times around the world, that is a very popular clock with collectors even today, and it's $75. Made in Germany in the 1960s. Well, shoot, I knew this would be too fast. I can tell this place has other things I would probably really enjoy, but I am running out of time. It is actually after their posted closing hours. And they are nice enough to be taking the other customers and letting me look just a little longer. Next time I run here, I'll have to come and do the other half of the store. Because there is a lot more to see here. A lot more. A whole back area I didn't even know was here. With groovy blue lamps. And just all sorts of stuff. So, well, shoot. I'd love to keep going, but... And they want me to go home so that they can go home. There's also a downstairs store and a bunch of new vendors they've expanded. So this place apparently is doing well. I mean, it's the only thing like it in a very, very large area. Wow. Marked down to 300 on the War Bonds poster. Well, we learned something lately about gate marks on the back of old cast iron. So even though this one is missing its handle, we're going to look and see if it has any, because that helps us date it now that we know. And there they are. So that's going to be before about 1910 or 1915, the way they poured iron changed to where they started pouring it vertically, and then it didn't require leaving those marks. There's an interesting rosary. The woman in front of me just bought one. A bunch of John Perry figures up here. 
we might lose view of them in these lights. But they've got this cool sea lion for $40 and the orca whales. What do they have on him? $50. So again, about the regular price. Someone has even made a little religious grotto with all their Madonnas. What a great selection of electric clocks. Priced anywhere from about $195 on up, but they're really getting to be hard to find, especially in working order. $245 on the Coca-Cola is about right. We just sold one for that price, a friend of mine and I, earlier this year. $195 on the Square Coke. Great graphics. My childhood in Little Tonka and Buddy L toys right there. They all had the same modernist blank faces, but I never saw a vehicle actually made to look like that in real life. Well, I only got to see about half the place, so we'll just have to come back. There's a hole downstairs that I barely got to see, and oh, I could have dug a lot more, but I found a few things, and there were lots of cool things to see. It's a good mall, and I will make it a regular stop on my way through Montana. Thanks so much for your support, and we'll see you again soon. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.